Welcome to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. And I'm David Kerr. And we're going to be looking at topics that are of interest to our community, both regionally and to the state. Welcome back to Rappahannock Issues. I'm Tom Cohen. Right now I'm joined by Reverend Alan Fisher, who is with the Presbyterian Church in Fredericksburg. Uh, and he not only is a, a terrific minister, but he has a really f outstanding congregation that does a lot of good work for our area uh, in helping the needy. So thank you, Reverend Fisher, for coming in. My pleasure. Um, we'll start off by saying, what are the needs and the issues that you see facing the Fredericksburg area um, right now? In our congregation, as a downtown church, uh, we experience many of the kind of pressing issues that, that city congregations feel. Uh, one of the things that we have been interested in and supportive of, and actually our congregation was uh, one of the original architects of uh, MICA Ecumenical Ministries downtown. So we do a, a great deal uh, to help the folks, neighbors who don't have any shelter, have no homes uh, in town, getting them um, back into housing. Uh, that continues to be a dynamic that kind of goes on. I, I know for many people they wish that were something we could solve. Uh, for whatever reasons, people still are falling into homelessness in our area. Um, we also know that the recent economic cycles have not necessarily included everyone in the recovery, and we're finding that there are a number of people who come to us asking for uh, temporary assistance, and many of the downtown churches um, have different policies and different programs that help to meet those kinds of needs. So they really are pressing household needs and then needs for folks who really have no housing whatsoever. And what programs do you do at the Presbyterian Church? Our congregation, it was very kind of you to say what you did, our congregation has a long history of mission commitment to the downtown area. Um, we have supported all kinds of different feeding ministries. Um, we have our own food pantry now. Uh, the regional food bank, which uh, many of the downtown churches helped to start and uh, actually shared responsibility for for a number of years before it became an independent agency, which is quite successful now um, and does terrific work. But the food bank now directly supplies, you might say, wholesale uh, distribution. Uh, they want to, to uh, distribute not to individuals but to groups that supply uh, needs. And so we're back where we started with our own food pantry. Uh, and ours is open uh, three days a week for a limited number of hours staffed by volunteers from the congregation. And we make available to families who have uh, need, food, staple supplies, uh, non-perishable kinds of things. Uh, we've done that for a, a, a number of years. Unfortunately, I'd have to tell you that we've seen a bit of an uptick in the number of people presenting for assistance in that way in the last, really in the last three months. Uh, in addition to other people who come and ask for financial assistance with utilities bills and, and some other things. We have limits on that because we want to help as many people as we can. Uh, and that's an unfortunate reality of what we do. We can't meet all the needs in the community. And so we have, uh, we have waiting periods for people to come back. Uh, and some of those have had to be extended in order for us to meet the kind of needs that are around us. Um, the other thing that we've been part of is a community dinner program that uh, now in downtown, and, and your viewers may not be aware of it, every night of the week in the city of Fredericksburg, there are free meals available for anyone who needs that kind of assistance. Our congregation's been very fortunate. We've uh, been part of that from the beginning. Uh, we provide, uh, take responsibility for coordinating uh, the Saturday schedule, and, and two and sometimes three Saturdays a month, our congregation is directly feeding uh, anyone who wants to come. And uh, we have a little signature thing that we do this time of year when uh, we, we don't, really, uh, don't only 
only provide a, a warm meal, but we also um, bake and distribute pies to all the neighbors who come um, in November and in December, and that, that tends to be a pretty special event, both for our congregation, but especially for the folks who, who receive it and participate in it. Cool. And then um, you said you've seen an uptick. Is it a different type of population that you're seeing, or is it, because it just seems to be, we're hearing statistics say the economy is going well, but it just seems as though on the ground it's a little bit different. I think at I might agree with that characterization. Most of what we see are families in need of assistance, often uh, families with many children. Um, and I don't know if that's really more specific to downtown Fredericksburg and the, the meeting, uh, the immediate en environs, or if that might be true across our region. I really can't say uh, on that. And again, because we have limited resources, we have to focus our assistance to essentially our, our planning district, uh, and in some cases it's just Spotsylvania, Stafford, and the city. Um, I, I don't know that I can speculate any more than that, uh, except to say that uh, we have seen a different number of requests than we had. And then um, some of the other programs, I know that at your church they, they, they've reached out to other communities or they do the things with the razors or whatnot. So what other things are being done either by your congregation or other congregations that you know of? Well, it's interesting. At this time of year, we, we sometimes, as local churches, hear from people in the community who want to help. They'll call and they'll say, can I adopt a family? We'd like to do Christmas presents for a family. You know, can you tell us this? Can you tell us that? We would love to have that much support throughout the year because we have ongoing um, ministries, we call them, or missions. Uh, for us, uh, local hunger relief efforts are something we do monthly. We take a special offering for that. Uh, Micah Ministries downtown has had more and more specific uh, items that they've asked of us, and we try to be uh, specific in addressing them. You had mentioned uh, disposable razors as something that uh, we help to collect, but there's lots of other ways that people can participate in ongoing ministries, and that's really a very successful one. Uh, Micah, for uh, some reasons that are, are quite serendipitous, got on the front edge of rapid rehousing. It sounds like a phrase, it is. It's a catchword. Um, it's a new approach to uh, providing uh, housing for people in need where you provide the shelter immediately before you address all the other and many times related needs, uh, whether that be addiction, mental health, other kinds of things. But if you can provide housing, you can do the other stuff more quickly and more effectively. Um, and so Mike has been very successful in that and helped to reduce our homeless riverbank population in the city significantly uh, in recent years. Um, and it, one of the, the misconceptions is that the, the greatest amount of homeless are the, the stereotypical one, but it's really not. It's really since the 1990s has been families. It has been families. Uh, fortunately, when it, when it comes to downtown homeless riverbank, we've not had a lot of families. We do have other services and agencies that help to address that. Uh, the MICA clientele tends to be more chronic uh, homeless and, and sometimes more difficult to serve. One interesting thing we've seen there are um, emancipated, not minors, but people who are coming of age and whose families can no longer support them. And so we see very young folks, sometimes who've dropped out, sometimes who've just graduated from high school, who have no means of support, no family. And so you could say the average age of homelessness is, has dropped in recent years. Yeah, very cool. unusual. Well, we have about 30 seconds left. Is there any particular program or any particular way that people who are watching uh, could get in, to do something to help the needy in our area? One of the, the most helpful things you could do would be to call your local social service agency in your county or city uh, to ask if they know of particular drives or particular needy families that could be linked up with. I do want to remind people this needs to be done in an anonymous way. It's still very fulfilling, um, but it's rare that someone will give you a family to adopt. Uh, you could also call a local church, a local congregation, um, and ask if they had other ways uh, to participate. And certainly there are other ministries like MICA that are year-round ministries with year-round needs. Um, and so uh, not, not just here in November, December, but on into the future. Um, they really are worthy causes. Well, uh, thank you for watching Rappahannock Issues. Thank you to Reverend Fisher and our other guests. Uh, not just is this an issue now, but as you said, it's a year-round thing. And if we do things now to help others, it would be helpful for all year round. So uh, please be generous this holiday season and come back to see Rappahannock Issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Blessing, please.